Welcome to the premiere edition of The Big Picture. I'm Jared Johnson, and I'm going to be doing a new feature here with the start of the season, which, man, Texas Tech's 2020 football season is finally here after what, man, what feels like the longest offseason in history, considering, you know, everything that's been going on, of course. Uh, but, um, man, uh, we have a new feature here with this, with the new season kicking off. It's going to be basically me breaking down um, every Monday press or every game week press conference uh, from Matt Wells, that Monday press conference where he kind of, you know, sets the stage, so to speak, uh, for the upcoming game, talks about his team. He'll be giving us COVID-19 updates, no doubt, um, uh, on Monday, and just uh, hopefully some roster updates, things like that. It'll be my biggest takeaway, uh, you know, top five or six takeaways from you know, just, just what Coach Wells had to say. So let's dive right in. I think, you know, I mentioned how it seems like it's been the longest off season, uh, man, ever uh, for, for Red Raider fans. And Coach Wells pointed out in his Monday press conference that it's been, it will be six months to the day when Texas Tech kicks off against Houston Baptist 7 p.m. at the Jones here in Lubbock. Uh, it'll be six months since uh, the Red Raider basketball team was there in Kansas City for the Big 12 tournament in March. Uh, and they were called off the court. They were warming up to take on Texas in, in the uh, Big 12 tournament in Kansas City. And uh, that's when the shutdown basically occurred. And, uh, you know, that, that was it. We haven't seen, you know, Texas Tech sports since then. Uh, but now, you know, assuming the Red Raiders pass those two, they have two more tests. And enough for the, the team is, can play. You know, there aren't enough positive tests. Uh, too many positive tests, then Tech will be able to play Saturday night. So here's what he said about that and just his feelings on getting back out there and what it means. He said, quote, It will be a great day for all of us, for coaches, players, fans, media, everybody around here. It's been a long six months for all of us. Football and sports is a great outlet for me. For us, it's what we do. It's what we do for a living. It's what we do. It's what our players do. Here at school, they are student athletes. You guys certainly cover it, so it's part of your job as well. I think for the fans, it will be a great moment for our team to run out behind Fearless Champion. What a great moment, and obviously I'm very much looking forward to it. And I think that speaks for all of us. I can't wait for the season to kick off and have real Texas Tech sports to talk about. Honestly, good, bad, or indifferent. Obviously, you know, I hope it's <laughs> I hope it's good. You know, but uh, you know, just something, some new, fresh data to uh, to talk about uh, with, with Texas Tech sports. So another thing that really uh, stood out to me was, you know, the depth chart was released as it is every year, the first uh, Monday or the first, you know, uh, press conference, uh, game day press conference. They release a depth chart and. You know, Norm, I always tell everybody, hey, man, this is not gospel. It's going to change a lot. But it's, this year, that is especially true. It's been affected big time by COVID-19 and, you know, the positive test. Uh, you know, Texas Tech's had dozens of players who have tested positive and been out of the lineup. Some have come back. Uh, and, you know, just looking at that alone, uh, Coach Wells confirmed that three of the 12 who were uh, had positive tests and they were active, uh, in, the, in the latest update last week, Wells said three of those guys have come back. So that means nine are still out that we know at least of. Coach Wells also confirmed that they are over the Big 12 uh, roster minimum. Uh, the threshold, you have to have at least 53 active players or you have to cancel the game. And uh, Wells said that as of Monday, they were well over it. Like I said, there's going to be two more tests. So some other comments COVID related, I want to talk about. Uh, well said that, you know, he wanted to point out just, uh, you know, how proud he was of his players for their perseverance through. I mean, because there really has been so many dis distractions between the, the coronavirus lockdown, all the social unrest. You know, of course, the, the players um, set out of a couple of practices, but then they met with local leaders, talked about the ways they could help and wouldn't help build uh, homes for Habitat Humanity here in Lubbock uh, on, you know, in the east side of Lubbock, the underfunded part, uh, the most underfunded part of, of Lubbock. Um, and also, uh, you know, kind of just was part of the community, encouraging people to vote, playing with children, um, all, all kinds of things, cleaning up some of the area. So, you know, they, they wanted to be part of the solution, you could tell, um, you know, and 
Coach Wells just was so worn to mention how proud he was that they have persevered. Here we are at game week, and at least as of Monday, looks like they're going to play. So I think that was a big deal. And I think some other coronavirus things to mention that was part of the big picture, in my opinion, was he mentioned a third player has opted out um, of the season. So and no, none of these players have been identified. I don't know all three of the players for sure who have opted out. Uh, and even if I did, you know, of course, I'm going to respect the players' privacy. Coach Wells doesn't want to ignore, doesn't want to name who they are. He says if they want to, they can go ahead, but he's not going to. And I think that's I'm going to follow that example uh, as well in, in terms of the ones I do know about. Uh, one other thing is I thought was definitely noteworthy uh, as part of the coronavirus, part of this big picture was that he said none of the players, and we're talking about I believe over 60. Uh, 60 players who have tested positive on the roster, none of them have had any serious symptoms. And to give you an idea of what he means by that, uh, that no one has required more than Tylenol in terms of their medication uh, for, from testing positive uh, for COVID-19. So that gives you an idea. No, the thing, you know, that was really, I was really happy to hear that, that no serious symptoms from the corona for any of the players. So that's the corona part of the big picture. I asked Coach Wells during the press conference what he considers the biggest strengths and what they need to work on. And he, of course, he coaches are like, especially in the beginning of the season, he didn't really want to answer necessarily or uh, say in terms of what weaknesses. But he did say he felt like the overall roster has improved, uh, which I agree with, the, the talent level. Um, and also, he feels like they've significantly upgraded a linebacker, which is crazy when you consider because they did lose Jordan Brooks uh, to the first round of the NFL draft. But I have to, with uh, Colin Schooler, who was named a, a starter in the depth chart, um, Brandon Boyer-Randall, Jacob Morgenstern, Krishan Merriweather. I mean, you go down the list, Tech has added a lot of talent uh, to their to their depth chart at linebacker, and I think that's one of their strengths. And that's what Will said as well. Running back, same thing. I thought that was going to be a weakness, but when you look at it, Sir Roger Thompson is a beast. I think he's going to be one of the better running backs in the Big 12. I've said that publicly. I've said that on Inside the Red Raiders that I believe that. Um, you know, If he stays healthy, I think he's going to have a great season, and he's going to be their bell cow. Um, now, you still need depth. You know, Guys can go down, especially a running back. And I think they've developed some depth there. One, with by moving Xavier White. Uh, to from inside receiver to running back, and he, you know, by all accounts, he looks the part. He's listed as one of the options as the backup running back is him or Shadarius Townsend, a former four star recruit who went to sign with Alabama and has developed there for years. He's a graduate transfer who came into tech. He has two, actually, three years of eligibility with the blanket waiver uh, here at Texas Tech. He's already one of the fastest guys. Uh, on the team, but he has good size to him too. Uh, and then speaking of size, Taj Brooks, you know, around 5'10", uh, about 215 pounds, another bell cow type guy who ran for 4, 000, over 4,000 yards in his career at Maynard High School. Um, I'm really excited about him, that true freshman. All three of those guys are in the mix for the backup, and they're still battling that out. So I think, yeah, running back is definitely a, a strength. I thought it was going to be a weakness, but they've upgraded that position significantly, and I do say it's going to be a strength. And then I think, I mean, any Red Raider fans um, worth their salt know that they always produce great receivers. And I think this year they have a really good mix of returning veterans, uh, proven veterans, and then also uh, you know, young, true freshmen that they brought in. Um, I really like the fact that T.J. Vasher, he missed a couple weeks of practice to focus on academics, and he got he did what he had to do. Um you can't teach 6'6 with a 7-foot wingspan and that kind of athleticism. I mean, he's had some big years. If he can keep it together and stay focused, I mean, as Coach Wells has said, this fall camp, or in fall camp, uh, he's, you know, one of, he, Wells actually said he's the best red zone receiver in the Big 12. I, you know, he's definitely in the in the conversation. So, Pair him up with, on the other side, Eric Izukamo. I think he had a really good second half to last year, and I think he's on on his way to having just a monster season and really blowing up in the Big 12. Then you get Dalton Rigdon, the leading inside receiver from last year, returning with guys like Keyshawn Carter really challenging him for snaps. Um, some young guys coming up, Jalen Polk, J.J. Sparks, Loic Fawanji, uh, Trey Cleveland, some really good talented receivers. So that's definitely another strength on the team. 
And then finally, I got to say, this is a takeaway for me. And you could tell, you could see the frustration in Coach Wells' face when he was talking during the press conference. I also asked about, uh, you know, I asked about Alan Bowman and how he, where he's at. And he said good things about Bowman. But when I asked about the, about the competition for backup between Maverick McIver and Henry Columbia, the, the transfer who came in, uh, you know, he could tell he's frustrated that he, you know, the competition is going to continue. He says probably all the way leading up uh, to the, to the Texas game, which is, you know, scheduled for the 26th. Um, so this competition is going to be going on against Houston Baptist, probably the bye week after. And he said basically because neither one of them have stepped up and grabbed that that spot, that they really need somebody to step up and grab that number two spot. That just hadn't happened yet. So uh, that's something to keep an eye, eye on as we progress through the season. I think it's going to be a common theme. It's going to be another uh, big picture topic here in the coming weeks. But, uh, you know, other than that, I think overall it was a really positive experience. I think they're really excited, like, you know, we've been talking about just to ha be having a season. And I do think the coaching staff and the players feel like they're a better team this year, that they have improved the roster. So we'll have to see. We'll get our first hint, at least, against Houston Baptist, uh, 7 p.m. Saturday at the Jones here in Lubbock. But with that, I want to thank you for watching. And until next time.